Today we are going to walk through two questions, ugly number and super ugly number. Ugly number is the prerequisite of the other question, super ugly number. So let's first walk through this question. An ugly number is defined as a positive integer whose prime factors are limited to 2, 3, and 5. Given an integer n, we turn the nth ugly number. By default, 1 is an ugly number which gives rise to this test case over here. What about n is 10? So we want the 10th ugly number. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, 4 is because 2 times 2 equals to 4. Then 5, 6. 6 is because 2 times 3. Now 8 is because 2 multiplied 4 times. 9 is uh, 3 multiplied by 3 times. 10 is because 2 times 5. Now 7 is not an ugly number because its prime factor is not 2, 3, and 5, it's 7. 11 is also not. Pause the video and see if we can solve it. So what are some of the intuitions? Well, for an ugly number to exist, it has to come from somewhere. For example, this 6, it needs to come from somewhere. Now where does this 6 come from? It comes from being multiplied by 2, 3, or 5. In another word, 6 needs to be composed by a previous ugly number, some smaller ugly number. So 6 can come from either 2 by multiplied by 3, or 3 multiplied by 2. Where does 9 come from? It comes from a previous ugly number, which is 3. 3 multiplied by 3. Some other intuition is, if a number is not an ugly number, it cannot compose of a larger ugly number. For example, 7. 7 is not an ugly number. So no matter how you try it, for example, 7 times 2 is 14. 14 doesn't work. 7 times 3 is 21. 21 is also not going to work. So we know an ugly number comes from a smaller ugly number. And the smallest one is 1. With that intuition, let's dive into the problem. At first, we only know one ugly number, which is 1. The factor list is 2, 3, and 5 and we want to get the nth ugly number. Now we know in order to get any ugly number, it needs to come from previous ugly number. At the start, all 2, 3, and 5 need to pair with 1 in order to generate another ugly number. So 2 pair with 1 give us 2, 3, 1 give us 3, 5, 1 give us 5. Among 2, 3, and 5, 2 is the smallest, so we know the next ugly number is 2. Now because 2 has already paired with 1, so 2 should pair with the next ugly number. And luckily, we already know what is the next ugly number, because we just calculated it, right? Because it's right here is 2. So we know 2 in the next iteration should pair with 2, and that will generate 4. In the next iteration, 3 and 5 still pair with 1. For 2, its partner has advanced. The partner has moved from 1 to 2. But for 3 and 5, the partner did not change, it still remains at 1. So in the next iteration, we have 4, 3, and 5, and the smallest is 3. So we know 3 is the next ugly number, and we should advance the partner of 3 from 1 to 2. And 3 times 2, that will generate a 6. In the next iteration, we have 4, 5, and 6. So we know 4 is the smallest, so we know the next ugly number is 4. The current partner of 2 is 2. What is the next ugly number? Well, we already know, right? Because it's right here. So what you can do is you can store it in an array of all the existing ugly numbers that we have calculated. We want to know the next partner of 2 is right here. It's 3, right? So 2's next partner is 3, and that will give us 6. Okay, in the next iteration, we have 5, 6, and 6. Now 5 is the smallest, so we know the next ugly number is 5. Now 5's current partner is 1. If you want to advance the partner from 1, you need to go to 2, right? 5 part partner with 2, that gives us 10. In the next iteration, we have 6, 6, and 10. So we know 6 is the smallest, so the uh, next ugly number is 6. But we have a duplicate here. We have two 6's, so we need to advance both partners of 2 and 3, right? So we need to advance both partners. Now, 2's partner is 3, so 3 you need to advance to the next partner, so that's 4. 
and two four that give us eight. For three, the current partner is two. The next one is three. So three three that give us nine. And you just do the same for the next iteration that give us eight, nine, ten, so on and so forth. So let's code it out. We will have an array. We can call it, uh, let's call it DP. We have a size of N and we return the last item. So this DP is gonna store all the ugly numbers. Initially, we will leave them all as zero and we know the very first item is one. So all the rest are waiting to be filled up. And the last item is the nth ugly number. Then we will keep iterating to fill up all the elements. Now we need to know what each prime factor should pair with or point to. So we can have some sort of pointer index, i, j, and k, where i refers to the partner inside the DP array of two. And j refers to the partner of three. And k refers to the partner of five. And i, j, k are all indices within DP. These are not values, these are indices. So for every iteration, we, we want to find the smallest value that two, three, and five can generate. So what we can do is two times the partner. What is the partner? Is dpi. Three's partner is dpj. Five's partner is dpk. And dpi is m. Well, let me just do dpi equals m. This is the next ugly number. And we need to advance the partner index of i, j, and k optionally. i plus equals, well, when do you know that your, your partner index should be advanced? Is when your value is the same. Oh, I think I have a repetitive index here. So let me use x. So what I'm doing is I'm optionally advancing the index of two, three, and five if my contribution is the minimum of the batch. Let's try if this works. Now this question is really just a primer for the real question, which is super ugly number. The only real difference between super ugly number and our previous question of ugly number is that for super ugly number, we are given an array of integers called primes. So this primes is an array, the size is 100. Whereas the previous question, our prime factor list is only two, three, and five. And that matters because in our previous question, the time complexity is linear. If you do the same algorithm for super ugly number, it's no longer linear because you have an n here, but within the for loop, you need to do the same for all the prime numbers. And if we call it k, your time complexity becomes nk. And nk is not good enough for this question. So pause the video and see if you can find a solution that's better than nk. So how do we do better than nk? Now one place that you can optimize is when we are trying to figure out what is the smallest element that we can generate, instead of looping over the prime factors, you can instead use a priority queue or a mean heap to be precise. The size of the mean heap will be the same 
as the length of the factor list. Let's say the length of the factor list is k. So you, the size of your mean heap is k. In each iteration that you're trying to generate an ugly number, you will do a push and a pop. So push and pop is log of k. And if you do it for n times, the time complexity is n log k. So that's an improvement from nk. Now the question becomes, what do you put onto the mean heap? Obviously, the generated value itself should be the most important because that's the rule of the mean heap. The smallest value is on the top of the mean heap. We should also know which prime factor generated this ugly number. I can use some other terms, for example, identity, ID, or label. It means, is this number generated by multiplying with 2 or 3 or 5? I'll call it ID. And also, we want to know what is the partner ugly number that's used to generate our ugly number. In order for 2 to generate 2, what is the partner ugly number? So this is 1. These are all 1. For the sake of easier understanding, I'm using the value of the prime number as the ID here. But when we are writing the code, it may be easier to use the index instead. So this will instead be 0, 1, and 2 which corresponds to the position of this prime factor within our prime factor array. But for now, let's use 2, 3, and 5. And also, I'm using the actual value of the ugly number, but when we are actually writing the code, it may be easier to use the partner index instead. So this is going to be 0, 0, and 0. But for now, let's stick to 1. And then the algorithm is pretty much the same. So let's just do some very brief walkthrough. We will no longer use this, and we will use our mean heap instead. We already know the first ugly number, and we want to find what is the second. We can get the second ugly number from the top of the mean heap. So the top is 2 to 1. So we know the minimum number is 2. So 2 is the ugly number, and we pop this item. And we know 2 is generated by ID. So 2 is generated by 2 in combination with its partner 1. And now we need to advance the partner of 2. And you can come back to the ugly number. Ah, it is 2 because we just calculated it. So you need to push an item onto the main heap. The pushed item will have the ID. ID is the same. Now that your new partner will become 2, right? It's from 1 to 2. Now, what is the new value? The new value is 4. So let's update what the priority queue looks like. This is what it looks like in the next iteration. In the next iteration, the smallest value is at the top. So 3 is the smallest value. So we know the next ugly factor is 3. Then we do the same. We need to pop this. When you pop this, you need to promote a partner. So ID stays the same. Your partner, you know, is from 1 to 2. Your new value is 6. So, you know, you in place this onto the priority queue, so on and so forth. Now, let's code it out. Now, because I'm using C++ and I don't want to write a custom comparator, so I'm not going to put all three elements onto the priority queue. Instead, I'm going to only use two because that makes my life a little bit easier. So because of that, I'm, I'm going to have a separate array called indices. And this indices will be the partner index of each prime number inside our DP array. So this is our DP array, just like the previous question. So the setup is the same. You loop through n times. Uh, DP0 is 1. Now, obviously, we need our priority queue. And I'm going to use a pair. Let me just test for syntax error.
and our priority queue is going to have the size of k, or rather the size of our prime numbers. So you will loop through our prime and you will put the value as the first item because that's what we're going to rank the priority queue by. The value, the initial value is just going to be the prime value itself. And the second item is going to be the identity. So let me put a comment here. Value is first item. Identity is second item. And when I say value, it means what ugly number am I going to generate? And when I say identity, is actually the index of the prime values. It's not the prime number itself, it's just the index. So I call it the identity. Now, when, within the for loop, I'm going to get the top of the priority queue. Uh, and I can do a value and the identity. Let me call it ID. Then I pop. Now, I cannot naively set the next ugly number. So I cannot just naively do val. And the reason is because there are duplicates. So when there are duplicates, we need to skip the duplicates. So we can, so we, we can do is by comparing the value against the previous ugly number. If value, if the generated value is not the same, we can use x plus one, then we set. And here we advance, and only then we advance x. Otherwise we still find the same ugly number. And then you push the item on top of the priority queue. You need to input the value. So we need to calculate the value. Value is going to be the prime number. So that's primes ID. So this is the prime number itself times my partner. So how do I find my partner? I need to go to the indices. Well, because I'm trying to generate the next ugly number. So I actually need to pre-increment. And then I need to get using DP. So this is the generated ugly number then I also need my ID. Let's see if this works. Just to explain what I'm doing for this line, indices hold the index of each prime number within the DP array. Indices, initially, all of them starts with index zero. And whenever this ID is used once, we need to increment the indices, aka promote the partner index, right? So we need to use the next ugly number. And you need, to, you need DP to access what is the actual value of the ugly number. So this is the partner. Then the prime ID, this is the prime number itself. The product is the actual ugly number that we generate in the next iteration. And I think if I submit, I'm going to have some sort of error. Right, yeah. So actually, all you need to do is to prevent overflow. If... Um, so what you need to do is not divide by this. Let's see. And there we go.